Good morning, it's Pastor Kurt here, and I got a question for you. What's the most challenging part of sincerely following Christ? Over the years, I've learned that the answer to that question for a lot of people is doing stuff, the actual fruit of our faith. We may master some of the concepts and ideas, but having it translate into our life where we're actually doing things consistently, that's a little harder for people. I was in a Bible study with some guys once, and we were studying, you know, 1 John, which the whole theme of that book is love. Love, 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 love. That's all he does. We get to the end of it. We're filled with faith. We're going to love each other. And I posed this question, how? How are we going to love each other? Someone said, sincerely. <laughs> and then someone else said, every day. And someone else said, with intensity, with passion. I, no, but what are we going to do? They were flummoxed. They, they kind of looked at me like a German shepherd. Finally, one kid said, why don't we hold each other accountable to study for finals week? And I was like, yes. Finally, some fruit, some stuff we're going to actually do. You know, you and I need to have fruit in our life. How do we do that? I want to go back to Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. Andrew covered this yesterday brilliantly, talking about how to use prayer to specifically grow in insight. Let's take it a couple more steps further this morning. Philippians chapter 1, verse 9. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Paul's brilliant here. He says there's a process, and it starts with what Andrew talked about yesterday, love-filled thinking. It's love-filled thinking. It's a grace point of view. It's not just thinking more or thinking better. It's thinking from love that adds a depth to how you see the world. When you have a love basis to your thinking, your thinking then leads to this, health-filled decisions. When you've got that idea that, man, from the place where God loves me and I love others, I've got to make some decisions. You start making decisions that are what? Pure and blameless. And what does that lead to? You go from love thinking to healthy decisions and it leads to specific actions. When you start from that place of a perspective of love in your mind, in your thought life, and you make a pure and blameless decision, you must then act. It compels you to act. It starts with thinking and it ends with fruit. What are the actions? Well, start thinking from a love point of view. Make a few healthy decisions and then be specific. What does God want me to do today? Does he want me to do the dishes for my spouse? Does he want me to help that homeless person I see every day get a meal? Does he want me to call that shut-in and go visit her or him and be a companion for Christ? Man, you know what happens when we actually get this down? We start thinking from the perspective of love and deciding pure and blameless, healthy decisions, and then there's a specific actions we follow through. Well, we live a life of impact. Our life begins to matter. We get meaning. And by the way, that's exactly what we're going to talk about this weekend. I cannot wait for this weekend. There is a couple points. If you'll master them, your life will just massively increase in significance. Think about the Apostle Paul. He's behind bars, and yet he's actually impacting the world more than all of the people that are free. You can do the same. You can have a bigger impact. Your life can mean more. So here's what I want you to do. Grab someone and get to church this weekend, and I'll see you there.